Welcome to my microeconomics lesson on market failure and government policy. I'm Andreas Nabor from the Isle of Man International Business School. In this lesson, we will learn about the following points. What is market failure? What causes market failure? What is government intervention to correct market failure? And does state failure, where government policy fails, exist as well? But in this introductory video, I will concentrate on the first point. What is market failure? Well, market failure exists whenever a free market allocation of goods and services is not the best one from a social point of view. Wow, what does that mean? Well, let's first review the free market allocation and then look at it from a social point of view. Let's consider the car market. Assume demand and supply for cars match. The car market is in equilibrium. Free market allocation has worked, right? But is that allocation also always desirable from a social point of view? If you think of congestion, pollution, noise, accidents? That is what we discuss when we talk about market failure. Or look at the health market. Assume demand and supply for healthcare in the United States match. The market is in equilibrium. Free market allocation has worked again, okay? Is that allocation always desirable from a social point of view if 50% of the population cannot adequately access healthcare? Again, that is what we discuss when we talk about market failure. So market failure exists whenever a free market allocation of goods and services is not the best one from a social point of view. So is free market allocation of goods and services always the best one from a social point of view? If yes, there doesn't exist market failure. But if no, we have market failure. Let's at first answer this question with a yes. Free market allocation suggests... Here we start a review on the free market. Allocative efficiency without market failure. Free market allocation suggests that consumers weigh up their marginal costs and marginal benefits and will make a decision to purchase where they match. What do I gain from owning a new iPhone? Is it worth the price? Equally, the producer weighs up his marginal benefit and marginal cost and decides to produce where they match, that is, where they maximize profit. What do I gain from producing another iPhone? Is that worth the additional costs? When both consumers and producers interact freely, demand and supply will match. We will be in equilibrium. This power of the market to match individual demand and supply is what we call allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency in an activity is achieved where any reallocation would lead to a decline in net benefit. In total, consumers and producers would be worse off. Now, if not only the market for iPhones was in equilibrium, but also the markets for its parts, for advertisement, for applications, for jobs and for capital, and not only for everything related to iPhones, but indeed all markets and all goods and services we could trade in an economy, then we would call this a general equilibrium. This general equilibrium can also be shown in the circular flow diagram, where consumers demand goods and firms supply them to the households. Now, to produce these goods, firms demand labor and households supply labor to the firms. And you see that both markets are in equilibrium. Now, if demand shifts on the goods market and we find a new equilibrium in the goods market, the labor market would be in disequilibrium. Demand for labor increases as well until both markets are in equilibrium again and both factor markets and goods and services markets are in equilibrium. In this market all consumers and all producers interact. They make up the society. 
So classical economics would suggest that the free market automatically reflects the preferences of the whole society. Marginal private benefits equal marginal social benefits, marginal private costs equal marginal social costs, and both are matched up with the price. Question being, are individual preferences the only determinant of what is socially desirable? Adam Smith said, yes, the market equilibrium does reflect the preferences of the whole society. The market does not fail. Adam Smith was a Scottish moral philosopher and economist. His inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations is considered the first modern work of economics. Smith is widely cited as the father of modern economics and capitalism. In his inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, he says every individual endeavors to employ his capital so that it may be of greatest value. He generally neither intends to promote the public interest, nor knows how much he is promoting it. He intends only his own security, only his own goal. And he is in this led by an invisible hand to promote and end which was in no part of his intention. By pursuing his own interest, he frequently promotes that of society more effectively than when he really intends to promote it. What Smith means is, you work in a bar or pet shop solely for your own gain, to pay your own bills. However, by doing so, you help others enjoy their leisure time and meet their demands. You study for your own interest at the IBS and thereby create jobs on the Isle of Man and provide knowledge and skilled labor to the Isle of Man. More controversial may be this example about textiles and food. A key factor in your consumption decision will be the price. Cheaper products are from developing countries. By buying these products you create jobs, increase welfare in developing countries, possibly even more effectively than when you really intended to do so, for instance, via development aid. For another example, remember our wheat market case study. Drought and fire in Russia, the world's biggest wheat exporter, has destroyed large amounts of their crop. Wheat supply has decreased, wheat prices have increased, and so developing countries who cannot afford higher prices will suffer. But High wheat prices encourage farmers in other countries to grow wheat in the next crop cycle for their own gain because they saw the higher return they can gain from wheat than from other grain and thereby they produced more, increased supply and reduced prices and helped developing countries. You see how important the price mechanism is here. Prices arise naturally and freely out of the market process. The price system is flexible and responsive. Prices reflect the preferences of the marginal buyer and seller and no one has to decide what they are. The prices are a source of information that is the invisible hand that has led the wheat farmers around the world to grow wheat and reduce the price for their own gain and not for the gain of the developing world. So in summary, we have talked about a lot of concepts. We have talked about the free market and its price mechanism, allocative efficiency, the invisible hand from Adam Smith, and if consumers and producers make up the society, then the prices that we have in a free market reflect the interest of the whole society. But actually we wanted to talk about market value, right? And the free market does not work to the greatest benefit of the society. So what was market failure again? A market failure exists when private efficiency is achieved, marginal benefit equal marginal cost and that is reflected in the price, but not social efficiency. Marginal social benefits do not match with marginal social cost. And therefore, this is not reflected in the price. The marginal social equilibrium, uh, sorry, the social equilibrium is achieved 
where the social well-being is maximized, giving the resources which are available. It leaves no resources unemployed, uses all resources in the most socially useful way, and the marginal social costs of any activity equal the marginal social benefit. If the marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal social cost, we should produce more of it, environmentally friendly car possibly. If the marginal social benefits are smaller than the marginal social cost, we should produce less of it, coal-fired power plants. If marginal social benefits equal social costs, we should keep production at its current level. If this social equilibrium is not reached through the market mechanism, we say the market fails. Clearly, it is up to discussion what equilibrium is socially desirable. Next class, I would like you to discuss whether the market equilibrium in the car market is socially desirable, whether we should have a free market in higher education as recently suggested for the United Kingdom, whether we should have a free market in drugs that are currently illegal, whether we should leave healthcare to a free market, and what we should do with companies that enjoy monopoly power. I look forward to this class with you.